Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we are going to first launch the Paul station that I promised in the previous video. This is subtly different from the previous stations. And then we are going to bring all the stations into orbit, try to land on Paul to grab a certain stone, whatever it was, and then we are going to try and bring the Kerbal back. This Paul station is supposed to help out with the landing on Paul, well, the return from Paul really. Uh, especially return to Kerbin from a flyby of Paul and it is going to do that by having a claw module so we have a little claw there and then an extra fuel tank just in case the return craft doesn't have enough fuel to come back on its own and a little RCS thrusters to dock uh, it'll do the rendezvous with monopropellant hopefully and we've got solar panels, uh, antennae, little ant engines and that's how it all works out so before we had a big relay antenna on the station, now instead we have non-relay antennas here, uh, the Commutron 88-88s, and also relays. Uh, so it's a combination of stuff. Uh, hopefully that'll work out, but we have a lot of comms headed over to Jewel, uh, the Jewel region, the Jewel SOI anyway. Uh, other changes we have made, I decided to put more thrust on the boosters here, and so we have Bobcats instead of the Skippers. And so we have a much higher thrust weight ratio at sea level. And as a result, I decided to add another liquid fuel tank for the nuclear engines. So now we have two locked liquid fuel tanks and hopefully everything can deal with that. But our combined Delta V uh, between the launch stages, you know, the Bobcat stage as well as the vector stage uh, will not probably get us to orbit, I don't think. So the little uh, vector Vector mice, vector mice, yes. Uh, the little vector mice will be left on a suborbital trajectory, which they'll have to be recovered. Uh, you know, in theory, they will be recovered somewhere else other than the runway at the KSC. And uh, this will use the the station will use its nuclear engines to get into orbit. So that is the plan. We've got all sorts of antennas on this thing. Actually, we've got these, we've got those, and we've got. Maybe it is overkill. And then we've got these relays and those Commutron 88-88s, whatever. Anyway, that is how it's going to work. We will see what happens. So make sure there's no crew. And let's get this over to Paul. Okay. Crawl up. SAS on. And making sure that we have the right engines going. Right. Launch. We should turn more vigorously this time because we've got more thrust to weight ratio. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. And booster set. Okay, they are off. Really, the higher vacuum ISP of the skippers wasn't helping that much because they were being used on a booster. On boosters. So I figured this was a good swap. Getting rid of the fairings. Well, we should probably coast now. Well, it looks like they can get us to orbit just fine. That, uh, yep, the nice thrust to weight ratio helped. Oh, uh, this tank got used up. Whoops. Okay, we need to uh, disable crossfeed there. The reason we're using the claw is the Paul lander doesn't have a docking port on it, so. Well, we're in a little bit of a lopsided orbit, but that'll be fine. Uh, let's dump as much oxidizer as we can into the shuttle mice. I don't know if they have enough to deorbit themselves with just the liquid fuel there. It's only, you know, a periapsis of 73 kilometers, though. Okay, this time we have no oxidizer in there. So it's a good thing we topped off those tanks up there, otherwise we wouldn't have enough to do anything. Okay. Right, we'll wait until apoapsis because that'll be the best time to deorbit them. 35 meters per second. Well, that is not controlling from the right place again. I hate when it does that. Control from here. Right, and go. Well. Periapsis of 33 kilometers seems fine. 
Oh, it broke. It broke a relay antenna. Gosh darn it. Uh, this thing has already damaged something. Oh, if I want to risk those solar panels. Oh, well, let's see. Okay, it's okay. And 31 kilometers for it. Okay, so those two are off. Well, there's a bit of an awkward direction for the burn. Um, you might have to do this burn in two bits. Because, yeah. I'm not going to want to do a full radial sort of burn here. We added more fuel, that means we're heavier. So, yep. Not the greatest for doing these interplanetary burns. Okay, I'll take that 30 degree angle. Let's go first. I think I'll keep it to a three hour period. Okay, so I'll replot. We will need to do a mid course adjustment as we had to do with the others. Ooh, a re encounter. Taking a look. Yeah, we're swinging by the moon. Very lightly. Okay, we will do this as plotted. And go. Okay, getting close to the end of this. And let's see how it's shaping up. Oh, uh, okay. We're not quite there yet. Really, it seems our ascending node is right here. We should have been able to fix the inclination pretty quickly. Okay, I think that's enough. Alright. And double check that our moon periapsis is not bad. It's not. Let's fly by the moon and then work on that inclination. It looks like we can do that sooner rather than later. That's all I want to do with Jewel, so I'll get rid of the alarm. And then we have the maneuvers for the other things. Uh, I think we'll do a maneuver with this first if it's sending notice right there. We can fix that right away. Of course, it's probably better to do a mid-course adjustment because it's further away from the sun and everything. First of all, if we do it right away at the ascending node, and of course we need, that's 500. That's probably more than we want. So doing it at the ascending node is probably not the idea. We do it, that's here. That's not right. There we go. Yeah. The direct mid-course adjustment is better because it's further away from the sun. Sometimes the ascending and descending node is not the right place to correct your inclination. This is trying to get to Paul, so... I mean, if we can get an encounter with something... But we've got a lot of fuel, so we could probably just capture and then... work our way in, instead of complicating matters. And... that looks like we'll get an encounter... or... almost. There we go. And if we miss it, we hit foul. But okay. So we have that combination of stuff to work with. And that'll be in 100 days. So we are not going to immediately do this one. We will add that alarm. So create alarm. Maneuver. That's correct. Okay. Does it allow us to jump to the appropriate vessel like this? Switch to. Okay. So we will do that, but first we'll fly by the moon here. Okay, our pass through of Mooner SOI. Okay, we are in interplanetary space with this. Let's go to whatever that is. Switch to. Okay, so, well, this is one of them. <laughs> I don't remember which one this is. Let's see. Rename vessel, Ike Station. Oh, so this is, yeah, well that makes sense that this one is first because, well, it's for Ike, not even for Jewel, so it's getting there first. And this is a correction in Duna SOI, so we are proceeding into Duna SOI with this. And it's not a correction, it's actually a capture burn. And our communication line should be pointing back at Urban without any problems. We'll be on that side when we reach our periapsis. As far as I know, all we need to do is get this into orbit of Ike in the correct location, not too high. 
See now here it says support for Kerbals is checked off even though I don't have the Kerbals on board. In the previous episode we saw one that didn't have it checked off even though it's the same exact setup. So I don't know, maybe when we turn to that it'll be all right. This, this, this doesn't say vessel type station, let's just fix that station. Okay, and let's see what's going on. Uh, okay, let's get rid of that node so it doesn't complicate things. Check our Ike periapsis. I don't know if we want to go around that way. We'll get into I guess why and then decide whether we want to change over to the other side or not. Okay, but we are on our way to Ike. Swing high and then back in. And keep an eye on Ike here. And we are in Ike SOI. And we are going retrograde around or clockwise. Everything else is probably going counterclockwise. So yeah, let's just go counterclockwise with everything else. I mean, there's sort of like a moonish way of going because the, you know, the Apollo missions went retrograde and everything, but do I want to? Probably not. There wasn't any requirement, it just said below 50 kilometers. Flag planting down there, ship gun on Ike, some other vehicle there. Well, sad not being able to see the surface of Ike because Duna is eclipsing the sun. And capture. Will the contract actually read complete? And, well, that's below 50. Yep, it is complete. All right, we got one done. Let's not waste any time. Let's hop on to the next thing. So we have this station around Ike. We'll see what we do with it. Hopefully it'll give us further contracts to crew it, expand it, stuff like that. We will see. Uh, next, whatever that... I guess I can't click on this up here and switch to it. We have to click it here and switch to. All right. So this is the Jewel Station. Okay, well, we might as well label it Station. And does it say that it's got... It's, I think it says it supports four Kerbals, so that's okay. So we just had a minor issue maybe with that one that will be resolved when we turn back to it. Maybe you have to turn back to it for it to really read it properly, I don't know. This is just a mid-course adjustment. We do not have a whole lot of Delta V on this, which is why it was good to add more liquid fuel to the Paul station. 1300 meters per second is not a lot. I think we will need to do some like moon assists to get this into a low Jewel orbit. All right, let's see if this gets us where we want it to go. We want Tylo to capture us. Oh, there's a Tylo encounter. Spending our orbit. Okay, well, uh, let's make sure we don't crash into Tylo. So keep an eye on that periapsis. And wow, that's a lot of encounters. That is something. Okay, uh, that would be a pass by of Tylo, another pass by of Tylo, at a safe distance actually, and then crashing into Jewel, but it still shows an encounter with Lathe, even though we would result, we would end up crashing into Jewel like that, but it's just, uh, we need to get into low Jewel orbit here, so as well get as much help from Tylo as possible while not messing up our inclination because we might want help from some other moon. Okay, we'll take that. Uh, we've got some inclination there. I'm not feeling like Leif is helping out a lot there. Okay, get that. Let's see, will the 1200 be enough to bring our orbit down? It wants a jewel station below 4,000 kilometers, so this side is fine. Um, the problem is that side. See, we're not even at 4,000 and we've already spent too much. So we do need more help from Leith or Tylo or something. 
especially Lathe. So, but we'll arrange that after we encounter Tylo and do this pass. So what I want here is, I guess, just the SOI change. Definitely not warp next, please. SOI change alarm will be fine. And alarm. Okay, now on to the next thing. And this one is Tylo Station. That should be relatively easy. One would hope. Tylo itself will give the help on that. And it has all the check marks. For reasons unknown, we have one set of our solar panels not deployed. By the time we get out to Jewel, we're not going to get as much sunlight. Okay, I just noticed that our signal strength is rather tenuous. Um, we've only got 5% here. I guess these relay dishes, uh, this is not the biggest one. Gosh darn it. I needed the, I think there's a bigger one than this. I put the wrong one on, didn't I? Well, we're gonna have a uh, fun time when we get into the dual system. Hopefully we'll get some help. But right now, 4%. We'll just barely be able to do this node, maybe. Well, this is technically trying to get to Tylo, but it looks like we've got Lath helping us out to get to orbit. Okay, well, that gives us a periapsis around Jewel anyway. I think I'll, I would like some maneuver to flatten that out somewhat. We'll see if a maneuver here actually works with comms. That seems better. Um, the Leif periapsis is still a little bit low. Okay, that's good. All right. So that's a really tiny adjustment, and we'll see whether we get to do that or not. So that one will create a maneuver alarm, since it's just inside Jules SOI. Okay, and that'll be before this SOI change. Anyway, the next one. So this is Cauldron's really tiny mission to Paul. Okay, this is trying to get help from Tylo. Okay, well, that will be an orbit. Just not a very nice one. Uh, we don't want to crash into Tylo either. Okay, so that's awkward. Let's say we do a maneuver when we get in there. And can we flatten that out somewhat? Not really flatten out, we just need to get to Paul. Well, that ends up on a crash course. It's not good. This does have a periapsis, and it's a good periapsis, and it's an okay periapsis there. Not bad on that side, maybe a little bit low, but can't have everything. Or can we? Uh, oh, well, that's pretty good right there. Let's just double check. Jill periapsis, fine. Tylo, there is a periapsis, and we have a little descending node that's touching Paul's orbit. So that looks all good with a 6.4 meter per second adjustment. And so Cauldron, well, Cauldron's looking good so far. So we'll add that alarm. Okay, then this maneuver and then everything else is, I think, arriving at that point. This one has full comms because it's got the 88-88 instead of, and two of them. Uh, that means it can't help the others because it doesn't have sufficient relay range. It's only got this one little relay antenna. Okay, and this one's just doing a direct capture. So not as finicky as the others, but we do want to do it properly because our capture burn here gets us a uh, Paul encounter immediately. And hopefully that stays the same. No, of course not. Uh, well, we could probably fix that. There we have an encounter. It costs a little bit more than expected, but it'll be fine. And that we can add as a maneuver instead of an SOI change. Okay, we have our queue. Let's proceed. Let's just go to the tracking station. I don't want to time warp with a vessel for 100 days.
Well, everything's looking greener now. Okay, we are turning to it. I might have to delete the two vector mice because I think the system does not automatically get rid of them if their periapsis is above 30 kilometers. Okay, so just a 1.2 meter per second adjustment. We do have communications, though it's tenuous and through the Paul driller ship out of all things. So we must be careful. Oh, we've lost comms. And we've got back. Probably the Paul driller ship went behind whatever it was. Oh, we've lost it again, though. Technically, this burn we can do later. Well, we could have done it earlier, too. Just a minor adjustment. Let's see when we get comms, if we get comms. There, we've got comms. All right. We will do it now. Well, we have a Talo encounter. Oh, sorry, Lathe encounter. That gets us into orbit, but it's too close to Lathe. Let's see. Okay, that is barely a safe periapsis. Gets us some inclination, but probably not too bad. And this is a Tylo ship, so... Mm, set target. 2.2... 2.2 degrees Tylo should be able to grab us. Yep, that's the Tylo station. So we'll just need to somehow get a Tylo encounter that will help. Hopefully. That's, we'll go with this first, though. And uh, that Leif encounter is before our next maneuver, so we'll just follow this in. The bright side here is that we do not need comms to capture. Okay, swinging by Leif. You never get a good look at the land on Leif with all this cloudiness. And off we go. Okay, sun has peered out from behind Leif. We are out of Leith SOI, so let's make some plans. Let's see, at our apoapsis, can we get something done? We, we only have 1,300 though. That takes 900. And we need to be... At what altitude? 250 kilometers. Well, that would do. Let's see, it sure perturbs our orbit quite a lot. I don't care about the inclination, that'll be fine. It seems like a capture burn. Well, we have to get below 250 kilometers, so let's make sure that happens. That would be enough. Let's see, that's 700 though. We do not have that right now. We would have if we could dump that oxidizer, but we cannot dump the oxidizer, so... Okay, I think we've finally got something that's doable. We've got a minor correction up there of 83 meters per second that encounters Lathe again such that it pulls our orbit down from there to there and boosts our periapsis a little bit. And then we encounter Tylo and we directly get into orbit around Tylo with this inclination and we will use 975 meters per second with a periapsis of 133 kilometers and an apoapsis of 162, all hinging upon communication. Now, this can all be done before we do the next maneuver, so let's see if we get a Tylo station or not. So, here we go. Okay, well, that's done as perfectly as I can do it. So now, a 975 meter per second burn. Let's make sure that that does what we had planned. Uh, it's a little bit lower there, a little bit higher there, and that's not where we want it to happen, right? Okay. There we go. And what I'm going to cleverly do is I'm going to lock some of these fuel tanks. Uh, we'll pump some of the fuel out. Uh, or maybe maybe we don't have to lock that one. Let me see. This one we can lock. So now we have 980 meters per second free, which you'll be able to use. So if we lose communication during the burn to capture around Tylo, it'll be fine. Because it can't burn any more than the amount that we need. So yay. <laughs> we will do that. But we actually have to start out with communication at Tylo. So that is something we can't avoid.
But first of all, the pass by of Lathe will hopefully produce what we want. There's Lathe again. It's second time helping us out here. Okay, so here is our approach to Tylo. A beast of a moon, of course. Our communication lines are going the good way. So potentially it'll be all right. All right, and go. So we have initiated the burn. Oh, it already accepts it. Well, we might, sh might as well shut it down then. Okay, it has accepted our Tylo station. We have a station around Tylo. Good times. All right, on to the next thing. So it looks like it's the Paul station, then the Paul lander, then the Jewel station arriving. And since this one has a lot of Delta V, I'll try and get it situated first before we have to turn to anything else. And I think we'll focus on Cauldron's mission primarily in the next episode. So we can make sure that Cauldron arrives, lands, picks up the, sto picks up the stone, and returns back to Kerbin safely, and that'll be the focus. Though we will still have to focus a little bit on the jewel station. Okay, but this is now arriving, and we will handle its maneuvers. Okay, here we go. The jewel ballet continues. And go. Well, we have captured. Okay, we want to do this bit accurately so we get our encounter. Let's just get rid of the node. Alright, well, a mid-course adjustment along the way should help. And we need to get pretty low, 22 kilometers, I think. Let's make sure we're in the same situation as the Paul Driller ship. Alright, well, something around there. Okay, fine. We have our mid-course adjustment to do. Let's proceed. Bulk station building for the win, if you will. Okay, that's good. That's good, and our periapsis it seems to be on the side that has lines to other things, so those other things are all in the dual system. The line back home is in that direction, and that... Well, we better get it done quickly, let's put it that way. So, let's see, how long is that going to take? Ooh, that's a lot of Delta V. That was, that's a surprising amount of Delta V, because we're doing everything manually instead of getting help from moons. Uh, but, we can manage it. Well, I'll just play the same trick that we did last time. Okay, 1018 will be fine. So we've locked some of the fuel to prevent it from going over in case we lose communication. Oh, it says a race start. Oops, I'm too late. I'm too late. So it's such a long burn, we should have started before we even got into the SOI. Whoops. You think it's gonna be easy? No such luck. And because of the inaccuracy of the burn, our periapsis is going down around Paul. But we might capture here. Still in Paul SOI. Yep. Oh, and we ran out of the unlocked fuel. Okay, well, are we firmly? Yes, it looks like we are going to stick in there. In the SOI. And so let's lift our orbit. And then we'll have our station. Okay, so let's go. Palms look fine for now. Okay, finally getting into the right orbit around Paul. That should be good enough. Yes, we have that done. All right, so we have completed three station contracts. We are rolling in dough, hopefully. And we launched one. Actually, this one was the one we launched this time around. And we have our other Paul mission coming in. So that will be trying to bring the Yellowstones back and do a return to Kerbin from a flyby of Paul. And also we still have this uh, really tough Jewel space station one because it has to get into a low orbit around Jewel. 
and that'll need some boosts from the moons. So those are things we will do in the next episode, but for now we have positioned three space stations and I will look to expand on these, of course. The modularity has its pluses and minuses. But with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.